Hey everybody, it's Father Edward here again with another uh, film interview. Uh, I'm always grateful for these opportunities. I love watching film and seeing these uh, movies on the screen uh, at home first and sharing them with you so that you can go see them at the theaters. There's a new movie coming out, Dreamin' Wild. It's in theaters uh, August 4th, and I hope you go see it. One of the things that really impressed me, I wrote my review for Catholic Link about the fact that I thought maybe could have been a cinematic expression of the prodigal son. So I kind of read that in there, kind of the good father, the son, and then the brother, and kind of seeing the images there. But I'm joined today with uh, Donnie Emerson and his wife, and their part of their story is being told in this film. The premise, uh, Donnie and Joe, his brother, they recorded an album. It didn't really go anywhere, but then uh, many years, three or 20, 30 years later, it's discovered. And so uh, it's a great story, I think. And uh, I'm grateful to have this conversation with you today. And I guess I'm wondering, what was the role of faith in your family life growing up? Because the movie portrays your father as a man of faith. Absolutely. He's, well, first of all, he, he married a woman from the old country, from Malta. So we all know the story of the shipwreck of St. Paul. So my mom <coughs> is the backbone of our family. So it's been instilled in our lives to always acknowledge God and the, the gift that God gave us through his son. And my mom is just so big on that, that it's permeated through our lives from the past and into the film. If you notice it in the film, it's, it's, it's there. Um, and uh, so I give, uh, you know, my mom, Selena, she's, she's big time. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yeah, there were a lot of, in the film, you know, as they created it, uh, there were different images and I pointed them out in my review, different scenes, that kind of statue or, you know, whatever it was. So, uh, yeah, so it was definitely something that was present, at least subliminally, even mm -hmm. in the film itself. Um, yeah, so you, you, you and your brother sang a long time ago. You made this album. Uh, what, what was it like for you guys to be discovered, to have a kind of uh, to go viral back in the day, and and even now as your story is being told again, so it's kind of a renewal of that. So there's been kind of this extension, two different times. Uh, your story has become the focal point. Uh, how, how do you receive that? I guess. <laughs> well, the, the first time we we found out that the the music was going viral, I think uh, Nance, you came to me and said, "Oh, the oh, Vea, Vea was Our on daughter, Alvea." Yeah, yeah, and so I, I was kind of removed from that because, I mean, I'm, I was right there when it was happening. But Nance was uh, watching a video. Our daughter explained to us, "Hey, Dad." Our daughter saw yeah. a video on YouTube, and mm -hmm. we were in, we were in the living room dancing with our ten year old son or nine year old son, just having fun. Like, and Alvea, our daughter, um, said, "Dad, your your song Baby is on YouTube with you and Uncle Joe." And we go and we look and there, sure enough, there's just a picture of the album. It's got 14,000 something hits. Huh. And we're like, what? Somebody had put it on there. So that's how he found out. Yeah. It was starting to, we had no idea. He had no idea. Joe had no idea. No. And it was that, that whole essence of the family noticing it right then. My little daughter noticing and then Nan's telling me about it. And then we all kind of like, what, what is this? And I would check it like every other day and it was going higher, 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 higher with numbers. So yeah, that was before Light in the Attic got a hold of him. Yeah. The record that reissued the album in 2011 12 and and it was kind of interesting because during that time period um nancy and i were working on on work getting started on a new record together and so when dream and wild broke loose you can you can feel it in the film hopefully people do that i never stopped i never stopped playing music it's just that dream and wild came into a time of my life that it was it's like like the prodigal son you know even the music was like it, it like that was like i lost this child and now it came there as well back into my life saying hey, you know i'm here I've always been here That's a good point. yeah 
Yeah, that's wonderful. And um, so when people heard the music now and as they hear your story, like, what did they think about it? The fact that something undiscovered for so long and now people are talking about. So what are people saying about it? Oh, geez, there's so many things. Some people are, are saying that the music is such a part of their life that they want to get married to it. They want to have their children. <laughs> they, 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 I don't know, it's just, it's so surreal. That there's so many different things that it's connecting to. We saw a video of a, uh, and you don't have you don't have to have words when someone says something. People that have actually recovered my songs, like Baby, recovered it. I've had young people, thirteen year olds, fourteen year olds, to all the way up past eighty, doing my song. So that speaks for itself that it transcends time, mm. and they appreciate it. And what I like about it, they don't have to tell me. I can just know that they're connected. They feel connected. It's the innocence of it and it transcends age. Can I can I say something I think is pretty neat? Donnie and I got married out in Fruitland. It's they call it the Rock Church, Lady of Lords. Yeah. And um, the father who married was Father Patrick. At our reception, I have photos of his he's playing electric guitar at our reception. Father Pat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can just tell out in Fruitland, they were so connected with the church. But the church was connected to their music. And yeah. he, I think we were doing an Eagle song at our wedding reception just for fun. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. It's pretty fun. Yeah, that, that's great. And, you know, when people see the film, what do you hope they walk away with? I walked away with my takeaways, uh, kind of just the, the relationship of father and son and, and kind of reconciliation and all that. But But what's the theme or... What do you want someone to walk away with from the film as kind of the lesson takeaway? Well, what I want to see happen is people don't get so caught up that it has to be, you know, you can stand by your art, okay? But when you when you get co confronted, you know, with issues like I had to, don't be so hard on other people that it, it breaks their spirit, but also have forgiveness with each other because you got to have both. You got to speak your mind. You can't lie. You, 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 can't, you can't be fake. You got to be true because it doesn't do any good to fake somebody out and say, oh, it's all good and it's all hunky dory because that's not going to help them either to continue their life. It's just not going to happen. When I was on my brother and told, he, he's actually continuing his own music now. He always has, but I have a purpose. He has a purpose. We all have a purpose in life, but we need to be gentle and be forgiving. That's what I want to see happen too as well. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes we always talk about the fact that maybe God has a different plan for us. So you make the single back in the day. It, it doesn't go maybe as far as you would have liked when you were kids and younger, but now it's gone so far. So did, did you ever sense like this was the time? So even though it was an old song that now this was the time and God had a purpose for it right now? Well, I'll tell you something, Father. I mean, this is, I take it really serious, Jeremiah 26, 11, that God knew us before we were in our mother's womb. Hmm. And I take that passage very seriously, that he is in control of my life. He's given me these opportunities, he's given me these doorways. So this is the time period for us, just like it is for us right now, our time period with you. He's yeah. in control. Yeah. It's kind of like living in the present moment. So, yeah. It is. So, yeah, music is so powerful. And, uh, you know, the songs that we sing at church, worship songs, hymns, whatever, they communicate a message. And, of course, the songs that you've written, they communicate a message, too. So uh, where's your career taking you now in terms of singing? Are you still out there playing? Or uh, what's that like? Well, we just got done doing the rooftop thing Nancy and I did. Complete joined each other and continuing our music obviously we wrote the ending we wrote the song together you know and um, we brought something special last night presenting it nancy and i did i really felt we did you know furthering and that's what you say something about that because uh, to me it's important that people know 
how you feel about the music going forward, you and I together. Well, we, we write songs together. Donnie and I, I worked with him for 38 years, writing songs, performing, and then he still did stuff with Joe. Joe supports me. And I'm working with Joe still. Joe supports me working with him, and I support Joe working with him. Him and Joe came to New York City. Now I'm in New York City with him. So Donnie gets passed around with different <laughs> music experiences, but um, he, it's a journey, you know, talking with you may open another door yeah. we i don't think he knows i know we have a direction of this is what we do for a living this is how we take care of our two children you know pay our bills but we just love doing it but um music we're just going to continue writing music. performing live we want to uh be around positive people and you know joe I mean? and my brother is doing a new record and i'm helping him with that record mm -hmm. i'm playing doing some drum work for him it's a different scenario mm -hmm. and which is really interesting because now he's in the driver's seat. He's in the driver's seat telling me, uh, Donnie, don't play it like that. <laughs> Down out in Fruitland. Yeah, he's recording he's doing Joe out in Fruitland right now. That's so. great. Now, has your father, is your father still with us or has he passed? Still here. Still here. I, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. So what does he make of it? What does he think about? I just talked to him two days ago, about two days ago. He giving me advice again. Yesterday. Yeah. He's talking yesterday. yesterday yeah. Giving me advice. You know what he tells me? Very quietly, my dad says, keep true to your family. Just keep true. And, and that was that was a line too, like uh in the film. It said that, you know, he would say, you know, if you can't believe in your family, what can you believe in? And so yeah. that he was a very strong family man, very supportive. And uh, it's so great that he can see this all unfold still in his life today. He's a he's a yeah. he's an unbelievable dad. He's an unbelievable father. I told him that before we came. Couldn't ask for a better dad. Uh, that's so wonderful. Well, your story your, about your music, Dreamin' Wild, is coming to theaters and people can go and watch it at the theater and maybe go and find your songs as well on YouTube or uh, mm. where people find music these days. And uh, I'm sure they'll uh, enjoy it just as much as I did. Thank you. Thank you so much.